ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're doing a KB Lake versus Skylake Showdown. So it's going to be the two i5s going up against each other, the i5-7600K KB Lake CPU versus the outgoing i5-6600K Skylake CPU. So this will be quite interesting. Those i5s are very popular because of the price point they come in at the, and the performance they deliver. So let's first talk about what's new with KB Lake compared to Skylake. So there's not much really. It has native USB 3.1 support, which comes with some of the motherboards, or pretty much all of them, I think. Uh, a little bit better power efficiency on some of the KB Lake CPUs and higher default speeds and thus better overclocking which is something to consider and basically the only thing that's really beneficial for the vast majority of users out there. Now it's also coming with new motherboards, the Z270. So what is different there? Well, not much. Basically over a Z170 you get four more high speed IO and PCIe 3.0 uh, lanes which is pretty cool. USB 3.1 generation 2, that is quite nice and Intel Optane support, although I don't think I've seen it just yet, but maybe we will in the future. So now let's talk about these uh, CPUs themselves and the differences between them. So again, there's not very much difference there. They're both 14 nanometer, they're both quad core without hyper threading, which means four cores, four threads. They have the same six megabyte smart cache, the same 91 watt TDP, now there is a difference in the integrated graphics with the KB Lake coming with uh, uh, HD Graphics 630 and the Skylake having HD Graphics 530, so a bit of a difference there. But the main one is the default clock speed. So the 7600K is coming with a base clock of 3.8 GHz and a turbo clock of 4.2. You compare that to the 6600K which has a 3.5 GHz base clock and a 3.9 GHz turbo clock. So that's a bit better there. Not a huge jump up, but I don't know. It's a bit different, I suppose. So now let's talk about the test systems that we're obviously testing these CPUs out in. So uh, for the KB Lake testing, I'm using the same one I used in the previous CPU showdown I did. I'll link to that in the description. That was the 7700K versus 6900K. Uh, so it's Playtex Rogue system. So this thing looks absolutely beautiful. It's a stunning system. So CPU, obviously we're using the 7600K. Uh, RAM wise, Corsair LED Vengeance 16 gigabyte kit at 2,666 megahertz. Motherboard wise, it's the Aorus Z270X Gaming 5 motherboard. And cooling wise, it's getting cooled by the Corsair H80i liquid cooler. GPU wise, they're running the exact same GPU the Gigabyte G1 Gaming GTX 1070 to make it nice and fair. Uh, power supply wise it has the Corsair HX 750. Uh, the case itself is the Corsair Crystal 570X which is oh, just a phenomenal looking case. This thing is so so gorgeous. I love it. And uh, storage wise this is coming with a single 512 gigabyte Intel M.2 SSD. Now let's move over to the Skylake system. This is actually my girlfriend's system. So of course it's running the 6600K. She runs a 16 gigabyte kit of HyperX Fury memory at the same speed, 2666, so the same memory speed. Motherboard wise, she's running the MSI Z170 Crate Gaming. This thing is pretty damn good. I actually quite like it. Cooler wise, she has the Noctua NH-U12S, uh, but instead of the Noctua fan on there, it has a Swiftec Vortex fan, just so it matches up. Uh, GPU wise it's the same as the Rogue, uh, power supply wise it has the Corsair AX760i PSU, that's the one I gave her that I previously ran in my system, case wise it's the Fractal Design Define R5 which I absolutely love, and storage wise she just has a little 120GB uh, Kingston SSD. So now I set the overclock for both of these CPUs to be the same, which is 4.4GHz. Now we'll talk about the max overclocking a little bit later, but my reason for this is to actually see how much difference there is in terms of IPC gain. And now let's jump into the benchmarks. So these are a mix of sort of productivity type ones. These aren't really made for it, but some people might do a bit of light productivity on them. But of course gaming benchmarks also. So let's jump in and see what difference there is.
and we're back. So quite interesting there in terms of the CPU benchmarks are obviously very, very similar um, within the margin area, but the gaming benchmarks were slightly different. So I'm not really sure what was going on there. They're all set to the same settings. Everything was the same. Um, so that was a little bit interesting. And I did run them multiple times to make sure they were accurate. But yeah, basically what we take away from that, is there much difference between them? No. Honestly, I could, you know, you could put either of these CPUs in a system, have someone play it, even, you know, a veteran tech reviewer, and they wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It's that small. Uh, yeah, so really, uh, it's not that much of an upgrade <laughs> over the previous generation in terms of IPC games. However, let's talk about max overclocking because that is something to take into consideration. So I took both of these CPUs up to the max. Now, don't worry, thermal-wise, I wasn't having any problems with either of these CPUs. They did get hot 80s and 90s, but there wasn't any thermal throttling to be seen on either of the CPUs. Now, the 6600K would go to 4.6, but it would not go any further at all. And that's consistent with what a lot of people have with the Skylake CPUs, especially the 6600K. It'll go to about 4.5, 4.6, and then it's very difficult to get it above that. The KB Lake CPU, on the other hand, the 7600K went all the way up to 5 gigahertz, and it was completely happy sitting at 4.9. It was pretty happy at 5 gigahertz as well, although if you wanted it super stable, you'd probably take it to 4.9. So there is a difference there. So, basically summing up, I would say there is absolutely no point upgrading to KB Lake if you're on Skylake. Um, unless your Skylake CPU is just a horrible overclocker, then maybe it could warrant an upgrade, but for pretty much everyone else, I'd say there's no point. On the flip side of things, if you were a person running an older Intel CPU, like Sandy Bridge or something like that, uh, then there would be definitely a reason to upgrade uh, to KB Lake. That would be a significant gain. So that is something to look into um, in the future. But yeah, really for a lot of people, I think the difference between Skylake and KB Lake is so minimal that it is a little bit disappointing for a lot of people out there. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.